Okay, this is a prototyping breadboard. This is the board where you're going to plug things in to make the create circuits. This is a small version. You've got um, one bigger than this and one much bigger than this in your lab kit. Now, underneath this board, so each of these holes, there is metal. It's called, um, well, it's metal that's bent. And as you stick a pin, it, it warps. So it'll hold that pin in. If you plug a chip in and you turn it upside down, it won't fall out. So it's trying to make electrical and mechanical connection. Mechanical so it doesn't fall out and electrical so it's like a wire. And then underneath the board is there's something that connects all of those pins together. All of these pins. So here you can see that. All of the pins in one column are connected together. And then this row up here, this entire row, they're connected. You can see that here. This entire row are connected. So we use these top things for power and ground, PCC and ground, power and, or ground. And then all of these pins are where our chips are going to plug in. And I'm going to show you some uh, images of this. And your, your Pi on your first lab is going to show you one of these to build a little circuit for you, or she'll build a little circuit for you. So I'm going to show you how this would be connected. So you might put ground on one of these pins. And that's going to come from oops, this board. We're going to get our power and ground from this board. And right here, there's two. It says, you probably don't see that very well, but it says GND, that's ground. And here it says 3.3. Both of these are ground and both of these are 3.3. This is where we're going to get our power. And the power is going to come in through USB. USB from your computer. Okay, so I put ground from uh, your breadboard. That, that board is going to fit in somewhere like here. It's going to hang off the edge. We're going to take that pin that's ground, and we're going to do that. Long wire. And then there's a pin that's VCC, and we're probably going to stick that somewhere like here. And then we have VCC. So actually, that's pretty good. Okay. And let's get rid of that. And then we're going to plug in a chip. So I made this one up, Mill Robots, that's my robot lab, and uh, made up chip. And so we got to power it. Well, we know power is on this pin, and that's pin one. So that must be pin seven. So there's ground and there's power. And so I can get ground from any pin in this row. So I get it from something close. And I get power from any pin on this row. So I get it from someplace close. And these are actual wires. In your kit, you're going to get a, a little box that has a couple hundred wires in it. Some small wires, some long wires. You should use the, the ones that are the right size. Okay, and then I might have another chip, which again, I'll put power and ground on. And then I can connect inputs or outputs from one to inputs of the other. So that's an output to an input, maybe. And there's another output to an input. There's another output to an input, or maybe this is an out input to an output, whatever. So I'm connecting these. Now, ultimately, we're going to still need some ways to get signals inputs into this. We're going to use switches, and we're going to need outputs out of this. We're going to use LEDs. OK, so here's something you got to know. So put it on chat. Uh, so first of all, if Miguel Tejeda is there, is here, and I know he was logged in before. Check the chat. I have a chat for you. Check the chat. Maybe you already answered. Uh, maybe good to send me an email because I missed it. Um, I've lost it. Uh, everyone. So if you have never had physics two, which you learn V equals IR, then tell me, or circuits one. If you've had neither physics two or circuits one, Tell me. Say me, 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 me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Learned in high school only. Okay. Okay. I know it's it's starting to happen that physics two is going to not be required at UF. 
And we like people to take 37 to one early, so maybe you don't have it. Let me tell you, V equals IR is perhaps the original equation for electrical engineering called Ohm's law. The most fundamental part in electrical engineering is known as a resistor. And a resistor, what does it do? It resists. What does it resist? It resists current flow, um, whatever that means. So you can think of V equals IR, think of it as there's a hose. You got a hose, if it's a big fat hose, you can send a lot of water through it. If it's a skinny hose, you can send less water through it. V is the water pressure, the thing that pushes the water through. R, resistance, is how big the hose is because it'll let more water or less water. And current, I, current, is the amount of water that comes out the other end. So V is the pressure, resistance is the size of the hose, and current is the, the velocity of the water coming out, maybe, or the amount of water coming out. So that's what this is. The only thing you really need to know is a resistor resists. Other than that, the rest, leave it for circuits or physics too. By the way, if you never take physics too, take at least baby circuits. Baby circuits is the non-electrical version of circuits. Or read about it. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. The basics are pretty easy. Um, okay, so when the voltage is fixed, and then for our case, it's voltage is fixed, 3.3 volts and ground, always the same. If the resistance goes up, the current must go down. One goes up, the other goes down, and vice versa. Got to be. So resistors resist. That's what you got to know to understand switch and LED circuits. OK, that's what a resistor looks like. These are called axial resistors. They have colored stripes on them. The colors of the stripe tell you the value of the resistance, how much they resist. There's a color code. It's basically Roy G. Biv, the rainbow. Um, but it starts with black and brown. But anyway, otherwise, Roy G. Biv. Um, but anyway, not important for this class. This is the color code. Black bound, then Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv, you might know from the rainbow, right? Colors the rainbow, Roy G. Biv. Um, there's no indigo here, though. OK, anyway, this tells you how to figure out what the resistance is. Not important, because we're using just some, like, two resistance values, or three, maybe, in our entire kit. So first, there are resistors that look like this, and you have two of them in your kit. And I'll tell you exactly what to do with those two. Again, it won't happen for four or five weeks. But we're going to be using these resistors even earlier. So this is a dip resistor pack. Looks just like the IC, except there's resistors growing across pins. So there's a resistor between these two pins. There's a resistor between these two pins inside this. What the value is, not really important for you, but you can buy them with different values. So that's called a dip resistor pack. And you have at least two of those. I think you have two of those. And they're either 16 pins or maybe 18 or 20 pins. I think there's 16 pins. Um, uh, so this is called a SIP. So DIP stands for dual inline package. SIP is single inline package. So this resistor just has one row of pins. And it's not a resistor, it's a bunch of resistors. This is what it looks like inside. So there's one common pin, one side that all the resistors are connected. Oh, this is the symbol for a resistor. This is the symbol for a resistor. Um, graphic symbol. And so one of the sides are all connected together, and that comes out to one pin, and that pin always will have a dot near it. That's the dot, right near that pin. That's the common pin, we call it. And that pin will always be connected to either VCC or ground, always, in any application for digital circuits. OK, so these are the three types of resistor packages we'll see. And now we're talking about light. How are we going to know when the output is true or false? When it's true, a light's going to turn on. That's how we're going to know that something's true. A light will turn on. We're going to use LEDs, light emitting diodes. And again, that's what they mostly look like. I'm going to probably end up drawing it like this a lot, depending on what software I use. Now, I want to tell you a little trick of how I remember what these two pins are called. 
This pin's called the cathode and the anode. So here's my little trick. Um, well, first, if you want light to happen, you put a low voltage on this side and a high voltage on that side, and it'll turn on. You do anything else, low and low, high and high, where you reverse these two, and nothing happens. So I'm going to tell you how I remember which is which. When you were bad in high school, when you did something wrong, you got punished. What was a really common high school punishment? Tell me. Detention. No, from your parents. Grounded. Grounded. That's the punishment I'm looking for. Grounded. So when I say that there's low here, you're going to ground this. That's the low side. OK, here's another thing. Who's got dogs? Paddle? OK, belt? OK. Who's got dogs? Tell me if you got a dog. Say dog, 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 dog. Me, 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 dog, dog, dog. OK. How many of you have cats? OK, well, let me tell you, I'm a dog man. Did I, on my first class, show you my dog? You'll see my dog eventually. Every so often, he'll come in here. He's about this big, weighs six pounds, full grown. Anyway, I'm a dog person. Cats are bad. In fact, I thought when I was a kid, all dogs are boys and all cats are girls. Strange person I was. But anyway, dogs, and I'm a boy, so um, dogs are good, cats are bad. When you're bad, you're grounded. Cathode, cathode. Cat is the ground side. When you're bad, you're grounded, cats are bad, that's the ground side. Okay, how you remember, how do you turn an LED on? Make sure the anode side is higher voltage than the cathode side. Okay, LEDs now come in multiple colors. You might know this because you go to Home Depot and get blue and green and purple lights for your house or your room. But these LEDs are actually the same LED inside, just different colored plastic. But now you can buy LEDs of actually different colors. Now, if you buy these as separate parts, like shown here, and you look for the shorter pin, the shorter pin is the cathode. Again, you can remember it, dogs are bigger than cats, mostly, not mine, but mostly dogs are bigger, cats are small. Cool. Um, so the smaller pin is a cathode and uh, anode the other side. So again, if I put low here, high here, LED will light up. If that's zero volts and 3.3 .3 volts, this will eventually probably blow up or stop working, but we'll get to that. But we also have a dip LED call a dip LED array. So again, two pins. This is what it looks like kind of inside. And this is what it looks like outside, LED. All of these are little bars that light up. And again, you've got seven, uh, at least three of these in your kit. And usually there's writing on the anode side. And I say usually, it's supposed to be on the anode side. And one semester, I asked the guy who supplies the equipments for our labs, or used to, um, I asked them, hey, this semester, are these notch on the anode or the cathode side? And he called, Schwartz, what are you talking about? It's always the anode side. I said, no, it's not. One semester before you started working here, it was reversed. He says, no, you're wrong. You're getting old. You forget things. I said, no, no, I'm right. And like two years later, we got the mistake ones again. It's a mistake. It was a flaw at the factory. They printed on the wrong side. But there's also a notch. Usually there's a notch. And the notch should also be on the anode side. So this is the anode side. This is the cathode side. And that'll be OK for you guys for sure, because you have somebody checking it out before they send it. OK. So these are the light emitting diodes that we'll use for all of our outputs this semester. And then we have switches. Switches are for inputs. So these are called, again, single pole single throw, and single throw because there's two positions, up or down or left or right or whatever you want to call it. That's called single throw. And single pole is because there's only, when it's connected, there's only one possible connection. This one's called double throw because there's two possible connections. But anyway, so this is the open position, and this is the closed position. We call this a short circuit. Again, if you've not had physics two or circuits. This is an open 
circuit and a closed circuit, or short circuit. Short circuit, again, if this was a regular light, like in your house, this turns the light on, this makes the light off. Not in digital circuits. And so this is what some of the possible, what they look like when they're dip, um, dip switches. And again, this is a special one. You've got one of these in your kit. The middle pin right here, and we'll look at this when we get to this part of the lab. This middle pin is this, and the other two are here. And so when the switch, if I draw the switch like this, if it's in this position, the middle pin is connected to this pin. And if I draw it in this position, the middle pin is connected to this pin. Again, we'll use this for one kind of input later in the semester. So switches, resistors, LEDs, that's what we need to make inputs and outputs for our circuits. And so the way I want you to draw your, uh, this is a schematic of the switch circuit, you're going to build the same way, is like this. And right now, let's ignore this. I'm trying to be self-consistent. Here's a resistor. Here's VCC. That's our power, 3.3 volts. Here's ground. And then we put our switch between those. And there's where we take our output. So this is where I'm going to teach you a little bit of Ohm's law or what you need to know about circuits. The only thing you really need to know about circuits, uh, or at least analog type circuits. If the switch is open and I ask you what's the voltage here, and there's nothing else, this is the entire circuit. Of course, what this, this kind of symbol means, somewhere there's a power supply, which here I'm drawing it as a battery, which supplies VCC and there's ground. That's what's this is a shorthand for what I just drew. VCC and ground, it's really a circuit. But if this is it, what is the voltage right here if the switch is open? VCC, zero. VCC, VCC, zero, zero, zero. Lots of people say zero, lots of people say VCC. Here's the answer. Um, we only got one choice. As the Borg used to say, resistance is futile. There's only one thing that this is connected to. It's connected to VCC, the resistor. Sorry, can't resist. Now, let's now close this switch. So it's VCC is the answer. When the switch is open, it's VCC. Now, let me close this switch. Switch is closed now, so that's gone. Well, now, I'm connected to VCC through a resistor, and here there's no resistor. So you got a choice. You can take something direct or you can resist something. What are you going to do? You're going to take the something direct. And so here you're going to have zero volts coming out. Switch is open. You've got VCC. Switch is closed. You've got ground or zero volts. That's how it is. This is how you'll always make your switch circuits in all courts. Now, in other courses, you can alternatively do this. And I just put the switch on the other side. This is known here as a pull-up resistor, because it's pulled up to the higher voltage. This is called a pull-down resistor. Of course, it's pulled down to the lower voltage. And this switch, I mean, I can explain how this works the same way. The switch is open. It's only connected to zero volts. So it's zero volts. When the switch is closed, it's connected to zero volts through a resistor and VCC without a resistor. Or think of this as a zero resistance resistor, and this is a large resistor, let's say a thousand somethings. And they're measured in something called ohms, named after Ohm's law. But if this is a thousand and this is zero, you're going to take on the value of, if the switch is closed, VCC. And the switch is open, zero, which is exactly the reverse of this. Now, I drew an X through this because if you built this, these resistors should be different values. And this is actually a much more complex reason, but I'm going to tell you it for the people who understand. The input impedance of the circuits for a high voltage is different than the input impedance for low voltage. And so it turns out that this resistor should be smaller 
than this one. And since we only have one size resistors in our kit, I want you to all use the same one. And it'll make it easier to, to, uh, to create the circuits. So you'll all do this for every lab. If you ever do this on a lab or an exam, there'll be points taken off, even though it works. I want you to be consistent for various reasons that hopefully you'll understand someday. Okay, so to make a switch circuit, we're gonna use an array of switches and an array of uh, resistors. So here I'm gonna show you. And it's very likely I'm gonna take some of this lecture and post it. Things that I'm doing here that are, lots of people have problems with, especially in a semester where you can't touch your TAs. Not that you're ever supposed to touch your TAs, but you know what I mean. Okay, so here again, I got show VCC and, and ground, which we'll always have. Here I will put in, this is going to be a, uh, this is my switch circuit. Here is a SIP resistor. So remember, that's the common pin. And here I'm gonna put the common pin, just like this picture, goes to VCC. So everything in this column are connected, and I just connected it to this row. So it's VCC. Now all of these other pins, Right here, there's a pit, there's a hole, there's a, a spot right there, a dot here and a dot here. These dots are all connected. So what I'm doing now is I'm connecting this pin that's right here on this chip to this pin right here for this resistor. And et cetera, all the rest of the way. So what I'm gonna do, if I wanna create this, here's my switch circuit. On the bottom of the switch, I'm putting ground. So there's ground. In the top, I put the resistor, and so I've now created a switch. So there's a switch right here, which I think I throw a picture. There's a picture now. Looks like this. And what's going to happen, there'll be a little bar here, and you can move this bar up or down. When it's in the position called on, what do you think on means? Does that mean the light turns on? There's no lights here. This is just a switch. What do you think on means? Closed circuit. That's correct. Why? Because if it's a normal light switch, like in my house, in the stadium, we had it, you turn on a light, it turns on. Turn it on means closes the circuit. Here, closing the switch means, in fact, low. Closing this switch means high. So you don't know a voltage by closing the switch. All you know is you've just changed the state. If the switch is in this position, then it must not be on, it's off, and the voltage should be high. So what I've done here, now I could have, if I'd like to, connect all of these, make long wires. Well, why would you do it? This means it's connected to this, means it's connected to this. So these little short wires, you got some really teeny wires in your kit, would make sense to do this. And so I've basically created here eight switches with one SIP resistor, switch circuits, and a uh, uh, dip pack of eight switches. And you're gonna do this in every lab, starting with lab one. So you're gonna build it in lab one, you're gonna build it again in lab two, you're gonna build it again in lab three, and then at that point, you'll probably just leave it on the corner of your board and you'll have to build it again. But it's important that you know this. If you don't know how to make inputs to your circuits, then the circuit is useless. The circuit only is useful if you give it some inputs. Okay, and then where the outputs come from? Well, the outputs come from the same place. It's the top of the switch. The output comes from right here where the resistor connects and the switch connects. Anywhere here. I took it here from this pin. I could just as well take it from this pin or this pin. That's one of the outputs. And then here's another output over here. And the, forget about the lows and highs for now. Again, to be self-consistent with something we're going to learn. Uh, uh, next class. And so I just show some of the switches in some positions and some in others. And what I've shown here in the brown, so this AH, that means it's true in this position. It's high in this position. The L, it's true in this position. So anyway, this one's low and this one's high. Again, we'll learn what that means, the H's and L's a little bit later. So that's switch circuits. Now let's do LED circuits. And that'll hold it. We're like almost, uh, no, we got till 4.45, okay. 
Uh, so then we'll do LED circuits. So real LED circuits always have a resistor, what's called in series with the LED. And the reason is the LED doesn't really want 3.3 volts. It wants less. Some LEDs want a volt, some less than a volt, some two volts, whatever. They're always different. So we put a resistor to resist. So what this does is it limits the current so that we don't blow this up. And uh, anyway, so you always need this. The values of it really doesn't matter for this class. You'll learn in other classes. But the way you turn it on is you put a high on this side and you put low on this side. And it's always meant, meant means the same. If I put low here and low here, nothing happens. If I put low here and high here, nothing happens. And if I put, um, what's left? I don't know. High, 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 nothing happens. The only thing that happens is high and low is when it turns on. So these are the schematics. And we draw the schematics both ways, this way and this way. Now, these, this, LED and the resistor are called in series. So it doesn't matter. We can take this resistor away here and instead put it here. Exactly works exactly the same in circuits. They're called in series. The order doesn't matter. Same here. We can take this resistor away and put it down here. Okay. So got to have a resistor. If you don't have a resistor, it'll probably work in your labs until you take that output that you have the LED on and run it into another input. That doesn't work anymore. And if you measure the voltage of that LED without the resistor, it won't be 3.3 volts. And it, if it should be 3.3 volts, it'll be less. If it should be ground, then it'll be ground. But if it's supposed to be 3.3, it'll be less. So anyway, you always need the resistor, whether it works or not without it. OK, so I show you here the resistor on the other side. So we're going to use an array of LEDs. So again, here I've got my power and ground on the board. I'm going to put in an LED array, and I show you where the anode is, because I can't show you the sign. Um, so there's the anode. So if we look at this, that is the anode sign. Oh, hold it. One more thing I forgot about the cats. Cats are bad. When you were bad, you were grounded. What do cats' eyes look like? What does their pupil look like? A line. A vertical line. I think it's vertical. It's right this way. Vertical line. That's that vertical line, the cathode. So it all comes together. Okay, so that's the anode side. So the anode side wants the resistor. So here I'm going to put a resistor pack. Here you can't use a SIP resistor. And, and there for reasons that we'll see later. Uh, if all of the LEDs were supposed to turn on when you had a high, then you could use a SIP. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use dips. So that's a dip resistor pack. And so I want to connect an anode. Well, first, on the bottom, I always got ground. So I got ground there for this circuit. So I'm going to ground it. Uh, and then I'm going to put another ground there. And then on the top side, I'm going to connect it to a resistor. And what goes on the other side of the resistor? Well, that's my signal. Well, I've showed two here. And so those are my two signals. What I've drawn here, A and, and B. So those are going to be outputs from some circuit. We're going to go to where A and B are. And the LED will light up when they're high, and it won't light up when it's low. But let's look at the other ones, the C and the D. So here, I'm going to look at this figure. And notice, for this figure, we've got VCC on the resistor side. So I'm going to put VCC here. And then on the other side, I'm going to take the resistor to an LED. And this resistor to an LED. On the anode side, right, the resistor, that's the anode side. And on the uh, cathode side, I'm going to take the signals. So these two signals, if either of those or both of those are low, it'll turn on the LEDs. So I can turn on the LEDs when it's the uh, signal's high with the A and B, or I can turn on the LEDs when the signal is low for C and D. Same, one set of LEDs and one set of resistors. Okay, we'll see this over and over, but I'll take this video and I'll upload it eventually.